This presentation on quantitative fluorescence polymerase chain reaction for aneuploidy detection has been created for the University of Alberta course Medical Laboratory Science 480 and is presented by Dr. Karen Matika. Copyrighted material contained herein is reproduced under subsection 29 through 29.4 of the Canadian Copyright Act. This document is available for your individual use. Further distribution may infringe copyright. By the end of this presentation, learners should be able to define aneuploidy and associated terms, describe short tandem repeats, describe quantitative fluorescence polymerase chain reaction for aneuploidy detection, briefly explain the principle of DNA capillary electrophoresis, identify normal and aneuploidy electropharogram patterns. We'll start off by going through some terminology. Aneuploidy is defined as the gain or loss of a chromosome. Normally, humans have 46 chromosomes. Monosomy is the loss of a chromosome. A fetus with monosomy has 45 chromosomes. Diosomy occurs when an individual has two members of a pair of homologous chromosomes. They have the normal complement of chromosomes, which is 46. Trisomy is a condition in which there is three copies of chromosome. A fetus with a trisomy has 46 chromosomes. Short tandem repeats, abbreviated as STR, are also known as microsatellites. They are a type of variable number tandem repeat. STRs are short nucleotide sequences of two to six nucleotides that repeat multiple times. D8S1179 is an example of an STR. It is located on chromosome 8. STRs are polymorphic, which means there is more than one variant. In the STR D8S1179, the sequence tetrameric sequence is TCTA, and it can be repeated between 7 and 20 times. In the Northern European Caucasian population, there are at least 14 alleles for this STR. Humans have two copies of each somatic chromosome. Subsequently, they will have two copies of each somatic STR. Typically, the STR selected for identification studies and aneuploidy studies are highly heterogeneous. However, it is possible for an individual to be homozygous for an STR. On the slide, we have an example of the inheritance of an STR using D8S1179 as an example. The mother is heterozygous. She has one allele with 12 TCTA repeats and another allele with seven repeats. The father is also heterozygous. He has one allele with 11 TCTA repeats and another allele with nine repeats. Their child has inherited the maternal allele with seven repeats and a paternal allele with nine repeats. To ascertain the phenotypes of the family members for an STR, standard endpoint PCR can be performed. A primer is designed to anneal to conserved regions blanking the STR loci. In this example, the forward primer is designed to anneal 50 base pairs upstream from the start of the STR, and the reverse primer is designed to anneal 50 base pairs downstream from the STR. Subsequently, the length of the PCR product will be 100 base pairs plus the length of the STR. The length of the STR is equal to the size of the nucleotide sequence multiplied by the number of repeats. Using the example on this slide, the length of the STR on allele 1 is 48 base pairs, and the PCR product for allele 1 would thus be 148 base pairs. The length of the STR on allele 2 is 28 bears, pairs, and the PCR product would be 128 base pairs. Let's go back and look at our family and see what size the PCR products would be for each individual. Again, the mother is heterozygous for the STR, having one allele with 12 repeats and the other with seven. This would result in two PCR products, one of 148 base pairs and the other 124 base pairs. The father is heterozygous, with one allele having nine repeats and the other having 11. This would result in two PCR products as well, 
but in this case, one product would be 132 base pairs and the other would be 144 base pairs. The child inherited the maternal STR with seven repeats and the paternal copy with nine repeats. The child's PCR products would be 124 and 132 base pairs. It is relatively easy to see that by amplifying multiple STRs, we can establish a genetic relationship between the parents and the child. This is done in paternity testing and in forensic labs. In aneuploidy testing, the lab examines only the fetus's DNA. Standard aneuploidy testing amplifies STRs found on chromosome 13, 18, and 21. Genes specific to the X and Y sex chromosomes are also amplified. If the fetus is missing a somatic chromosome, there will be only one copy of the short chain and repeat, and subsequently only one PCR product will be detected. If the fetus is disomic and has two copies of the chromosome, two PCR products will be detected. If the fetus has an extra chromosome, there will be three copies of the STR on that chromosome and there will be three PCR products. As you may have noticed, I have asterisks next to the number of PCR products produced. If an individual is homozygous for an STR, only one PCR product is produced for that target. Endpoint PCR and gel electrophoresis cannot differentiate between monosomy and monoallelic disomy. Quantitative fluorescent PCR can differentiate between single and multiple copies of an STR by comparing the amount of fluorescence produced. Quantitative fluorescence PCR is an endpoint PCR method in which the PCR products are labeled with the fluorophore and separated by capillary electrophoresis. Quantitative fluorescence is used in the clinical laboratory to detect aneuploidy and in the forensic lab for identification. In QF PCR, one of the two primers that amplify the STR is labeled with a fluorophore. On this slide, fluorophores are represented by the colored diamonds and the primers are represented by colored arrows. The STRs are of variable sizes and they are represented by black triangles. In the example on this slide, we can amplify three different STRs by using different colored fluorophores for our primer sets. Strategic placement of the primers to increase or decrease the size of the PCR products can be used for further multiplexing. This is illustrated in the figure by the movement of the reverse primer to slightly further and further downstream from the STR. The reactions are amplified in the standard thermocyclic and the PCR reactions are cleaned to remove unincorporated reagents and mixed with a DNA ladder prior to electrophoresis. Note that each STR in a normal individual is present in two copies, and subsequently there will be two PCR products present. So for STR1, it'll be present on the chromosome twice, so there'll be two alleles, assuming that the individual is heterozygous for the STR. The same can be said for STR2 and STR3. Notice, by, again, by moving the position of the reverse primer, our PCR products are of variable sizes. The PCR products are separated and detected using capillary electrophoresis. These systems are often referred to as genetic analyzers, and they can also be used for Sanger sequencing. The images on this slide are of a Applied Biosystems genetic analyzer, this is the front view of the machine, and this is the view of the instrument with the door open. We have a area here in which we will load a 96 well plate that contains our clean DNA that has the DNA ladder applied to it or mixed with it. The sample is injected into the cathode end of the capillary array, and this is done by electrokinetic injection. When a high voltage is applied, the PCR products will move through a full flowable polyacrylamide-based polymer towards the anode, which is over here. As the molecules migrate through the polymer, they will pass through a laser and detector system. Smaller molecules will migrate more quickly than larger molecules. 
As these molecules pass by the detector and laser, the laser will excite the fluorophore and it will emit light of a longer wavelength, which is detected by a CCD camera. On this slide, we have a figure representing a simplified version of the capillary electrophoresis. So the sample is applied at the cathode end, it is injected by electrokinetic injection, and it will migrate towards the anode based on its size, with smaller fragments traveling more quickly than larger fragments. As the fragments pass by the laser, the fluorophore is excited and it emits a wavelength of light that is detected. The instrument will then create an electropherogram. On the y-axis of the electropherogram is the change in fluorescence or relative fluorescence, and along the x-axis is the size of the DNA fragments in base pairs, so getting bigger as we go towards the right. And we can see that the blue fragment passes by first, and so it's here, and then we have green, blue, red, green, blue, as per size. The genetic analyzer can separate these bands based on their fluorophore, and so here at the bottom we have what we would call binned analysis. So for STR1, we can see we have two products created two peaks. For STR2, again, we have two peaks of different sizes, and for STR3, again, we have two peaks of two different sizes. Next, we'll go on to deciphering these patterns that we see in electropherograms. The images on this slide illustrate some of the possible electropherogram peaks that can be encountered for a single somatic STR. In the first image, we have a single peak. Now, this can occur in a monosomy, or it can represent two identical copies of an STR. To differentiate between these two, it's important to examine the height of the peaks. When an allele is homozygous, the peak should be twice as tall as the heterogeneous peaks. Assays for the detection of an aneuploidy usually include multiple targets for each chromosome. Subsequently, if an individual has lost a chromosome, all targets on that chromosome will display a single peak. The electropherogram on the far right of the slide has two peaks of the same height. This pattern is observed in dialelic disomy, and it occurs when an individual is heterozygous for the target STR. On this slide, we have examples of electropherograms from individuals with a trisomy. Here, in the first image, we have three peaks, all of the same height. This indicates the individual has three copies of the STR, and that would result from three different chromosomes. It's also possible that the individual may be homozygous for one of those three chromosomes, and so we have a pattern here of two peaks, with one peak being twice as tall as the other. Again, both of these patterns represent trisomies. This is a triallelic trisomy, and this is a diallelic trisomy. In summary, an aneuploidy is the gain or the loss of a chromosome. In the clinical lab, we amplify short tandem repeats by quantitative fluorescence PCR to detect aneuploidy. STRs are short sequences of nucleotides that are repeated multiple times. They are polymorphic. QF-PCR products are resolved and detected by capillary electrophoresis. The following references were used in the creation of this PowerPoint presentation.